Frank Close has the Phillies mailbag with a lot of goodies today as uh, the Phillies kept me up late last night, Frank, and uh, we saw our old buddy Chase Utley go deep and uh, Zach Eflin, who came from the Dodgers to the Phillies in that Jimmy Rollins deal, struggled again last night, did not pitch very well. No, he, he's been a little rough lately. You know, if you look at his last three outings, he's given up a total of 20 runs in 13 innings. Uh, certainly that's not the longevity or the performance you'd, you'd want from Eflin, and, and it's a shame because, you know, I, I was in Pittsburgh a couple of weeks ago watching him pitch that, that stellar complete game shutout. So, uh, you know he's got some tools. I think he's just going through some of his little freshman uh, rough patch, I guess, that, that a lot of them have, you know, where uh, it just all seems so easy when you pitch a nice game like that, and then uh, it's really easy to get off your game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's good to see Utley. You know, he said he wants to play again next year, right? We see a lot of these guys uh, retiring. Uh, we have uh, some reports out there that uh, Prince Fielder is going to make an announcement. We saw the A-Rod stuff that he's going to have his final game with the team this year anyway, not retiring, but to Shira. Uh, so a lot of guys from that era hanging him up, but Utley still wants to play again. Yeah, I don't think any player wants to give it up easily. Uh, Ryan Howard, too, said that he hopes to play next year as well, so – I think a lot of the time it's just a matter of uh, you have to wait till the game just catches up to you. And it's, it, uh, if you look at like Shares' performance, A. Rod's performance, neither of them are playing that well this year. So, so I, it's a shame that not everybody gets to go out like David Ortiz, you know, where they're still actually being a productive player. But I, I think more often than not, you know, like we saw with Tim Griffey Jr. Even I mean, he had a really sad end to his career his last season. So uh, it's kind of it's nice to see some players get ahead of it, but I think in the case of a lot of these players, they're just not able to do it anymore. All right, uh, let's go over to the mailbag. Some questions for Frank Close. You can uh, send your mailbag questions in uh, each week at Frank Close with a K973, and uh, check them out on our website, 973ESPN.com. Baseball George has a question. He wants to know, why Matt Clintac would give Pete Mackin and no lefties in the bullpen. All righties on this roster. Yeah, it's really it's really strange. When the Phillies designated Red over Holzer for assignment, I, and I've been trying to find another time that in Phillies history where they, they haven't had uh, a left-handed pitcher in the bullpen. I, I have seen some Stark on Twitter, but I haven't heard back yet because he always seems to know that kind of trivia. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, they have no left-handed pitcher, not even just in the bullpen, but on the roster itself. And I think if you look at it, it kind of comes down to this. What's better, a bad left-hander or no left-hander at all? And if you look at some of the numbers throughout the season, all the different left-handed pitchers that they've thrown into that bullpen haven't really done well. Now, um, if you think way back to opening day, it seems like forever ago, but but James Russell was that that sort of that veteran arm the Phillies signed with the idea that he would be one of the lefties. And, uh, and he did not last very long at all. He had hit lefty hitting 444 against him when the Phillies had to, had to cut him loose. Elvis Araujo, uh, 268 batting average against him from left-handed hitters. And Daniel Stump was up at 429. So uh, I think it's, it's important to consider, too, that even in these last couple of weeks when they just had Oberholzer in the bullpen, he really wasn't filling that left-handed specialist role anyway. You know, he was sort of the long man slash mop up man, and and he was not pitching like a left hand option in the bullpen to get left handers out. So, uh, I think they finally got to the point where they thought that uh, Oberhel- Oberholzer wasn't helping them at all as in the left handed role. And and as he talked about last week, there's a lot of forty man roster spots that they have to make some tough decisions on. And and I think they they figured that Oberholzer would would not be somebody. Uh, that that factors too great into their plans going forward, so they just decided to to cut them loose. And you know, we saw Michael Marriott come up; uh, he he pitched pretty well, you know, right off the bat. So, you know, when you're looking at the two of them together, would you want an effective uh, Michael Marriott, or do you want uh, a left-hander who's not getting anybody out? Frank Close is with us. The Phillies mailbag is open, and Frank Dalton wants to know: There's still another whole month of baseball left, but do you have any insight? on what McPhail and company will do in the offseason. Yeah, I think this offseason is not going to be too exciting for Phillies fans. But I think it's not going to be a lot different from this past offseason. Uh, you know, they're not going to be out there as players in the free agent market. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're going to still try to try to build this for the future. Uh, you know, it seems like the, the rebuild's been going on a while, but 
they still have a whole batch of players that need to rise to the major leagues. And you're looking at potentially next year having Nick Williams be your starting left fielder, right fielder, center fielder, however they decide to play him. You know, he kind of plays everything equally this year at AAA. Uh, starting catcher could be Andrew Knapp or maybe even Ray Alvaro or maybe catching goes to both of them. Uh, and then you still got to see J.P. Crawford. He could get that job out of spring training. So it's almost like you need to get these, these prospects in place. You need to get them to see what they can do. And if you consider all those names, that's, that's a big chunk of your starting lineup that's going to be out there for the first time next year. So you really still need to make sure that they have space on the roster, that they can come up and they can show what they can do. Uh, you know, While, all along, you still have the, the people like Dylan Cousins and, and Reese Hoskins who, who still have some improving to do, even though they're having tremendous seasons. They get a chance to, to sort of rise to AAA. So... The Phillies probably won't do anything too dramatic in terms of bringing guys in, uh, but uh, you know, keep keep an eye on uh, 2018 when there's a massive amount of wonderful free agents, and they might try to settle for the what they did this year, which was you know take 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 some flyers on some Andrew Bailey's or Ernesto Freire's or Edward Mejica's, and or maybe sign a major league free agent like David Hernandez, hoping he works out and Hernandez has been so so for them, but. Uh, yeah, it's, those types of uh, signings are worth the risk, you know, because then hopefully you'll have something. But uh, don't don't get too excited about the Phillies of this off season. And even though they have lots of money, uh, they're probably not going to be able to spend it on on much major league talent until they really know what's going on with the guys they already have. And of course, the Phillies in Los Angeles, so they're seeing Chase Utley right now. But Michael in the mailbag says, "What could it hurt at this point?" to bring back Jimmy Rollins to finish his career as a Philly. Wouldn't it be a wonderful tribute and goodwill wish? Yes, and, and the, the reason why this question came up, one of our friends over at the website, The Good Fight, he wrote a piece the other day, David Cohen's his name, suggesting that the Phillies give Rollins not just a you know one-day uh, professional services contract, but an actual major league contract to, to make an appearance in Philly's uh, pinstripes one last time before he retires. Now, I, I think we can all agree that if you look back through Philly's history, if he's if he's not the top shortstop in Philly's history, he's right up there among the top couple. I mean, uh, Larry Bell was one of the best, and he never won an MVP, so he could be very well be the best. But uh, unfortunately, making a one-day contract for the major leagues is, is not something which which uh, really happens uh, now. Uh, former Philly Roy Halladay, after he finished with the Phillies, he signed a one-day contract, quote-unquote, with the Blue Jays so that he could retire with his drafting organization. And that was actually a minor league deal. Uh, just a side note, it's kind of funny. Roy Halladay could have been picked in the Rule 5 draft after that because he was a minor leaguer not on a 40-man roster. Uh, not that he was going to play. But um, but you see, it's, it's kind of problematic if you try to do it as a – uh, a player on the 25-man roster because then you also need that 40-man roster space, which last week we were talking about was such an issue for you know trying to manage all their players. So, so if you bring him up for something like that, you risk losing somebody that could be a piece in your organization down the line. And on top of all of that, when's the last time Jimmy Rollins actually played a game? <laughs> so, uh, are they would they have to give him a rehab assignment before they? bring him up to the major leagues or would he just come up play for one day go over for and embarrass himself so i don't think that's exactly what, what what we want to do to send jimmy rollins off uh but that said i'm sure at some point when he decides to retire there will be a jimmy rollins day and and actually since since i penned this we we learned that two former phillies uh placido polanco and randy wolf they're going to retire as phillies this upcoming weekend at citizens bank park so uh, I'm sure Jimmy Rollins will be doing the exact same thing at some point soon. Uh, Frank Close, 97.3 ESPN.com. Frank, uh, obviously you've traveled all around with the Phillies this year. You've seen a lot of baseball, minor league, professional. Uh, any thought from you that Tim Tebow might want to try to play baseball? <laughs> uh, this guy's 29 years old at this point. So now, uh, just for, for one comparison, I know it's not the, the, the same thing, but... Uh, the Phillies had that Adam Lowen in their system a couple years ago, at which point he was already in his 30s. And, and I remember going to a Reading game to, to, to look for some prospects, and they're, they're ruling out this 30-year-old at AA. And you just kind of ask, well, what's the point? Uh, you know, I think the big issue here with Tim Depot is 
you throw him in a major league organization, he's tying up one of their de- developmental spots. So uh, I think it's more likely if, if anybody at all is going to let him uh, try to play baseball, it's probably an independent league team. Uh, so, I mean, he's working for ESPN up in uh, – up in Connecticut, maybe the Bridgeport Bluefish, an independent team that used to play the Camden River Sharks. Maybe they'll take a flyer on them. But I really don't see any major league organization doing any more than giving him a token visit to, to Camp Lake. I remember the uh, San Diego Padres let Garth Brooks play shortstop in a uh, spring training game. Right, right. So uh, I don't know. Somebody could do a gimmick like that. But, but really, no team that's taking them seriously as a major league organization can afford to give up developmental space uh, to a 29-year-old. I don't care who he is. And I will say that as uh, someone who's seen, at least on TV, but I, but Tim Tebow, has, has, he can hit a home run in batting practice, no problem at all. But uh, when's the last time he saw a, 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 like a slider or a curveball and, <laughs> and actually uh, tried to hit it? So uh, I'm sure somebody somewhere... Uh, we'll give him a, uh, a spot as a gimmick, but but I don't see much more than that. Keep in mind, Frank, we're down here in AC Surf Country, so we remember those Bridgeport Bluefish real well, and they could sell a lot of jerseys. Oh, they're good old days. Ruben Sierra with Mitch Williams. Uh, yeah. Jose, was it Jose Leans? You know, they had some don't, good uh, Prince Fielder good was or Cecil Fielder. Cecil Fielder was the manager that's at right, one point. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and actually, it's a shame that his son Prince is going to meet the, the uh, same fate he did. It, it sounds like. Cause, uh, and it came to Cecil. He just he just got uh, too injured. And he couldn't play anymore. His his big body just let him down. It's, it's a shame that his son's having that too. Uh, Frank Close, uh, ch- check him out on Twitter at Frank Close with a K nine seven three, and uh, read all the stuff at Philadelphia dot com. Part of Sports Talk Philly dot com. And uh, Frank, uh, well, obviously, late night tonight. Hopefully uh, you get a good night's sleep. I did not get one last night. That game kept me up to what? <laughs> that was a long one last night. Take care, pal. It's, it's, have a good one, guys.